Hello, welcome to my channel. If you're brand new here, my name's Lachlan and this is my booktube. I'm super excited for today's video because I'm going to be talking about all of the recent hockey romances I've read, plus ones that I have on my TBR that I'm super excited for. I have over 20 books to talk about, so let's get started. Also, I'm sorry if there's like any kind of background noise because I could not get myself to kick my dogs out. Normally, I like put them in another room while I'm filming, but I just couldn't get myself to do it today. I don't know. They look at me with their puppy dog eyes and then I'm like, okay, fine, you can stay. But you're probably going to be able to hear some breathing noises and some snoring. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, first off, I want to talk about, I feel like it's a hidden gem. I have not heard a lot about this book. I haven't seen anyone that I know read it. Um, this is The Not Outcast by Tijan. I don't know how you pronounce the name, but it's T-I-J-A-N. This was so freaking good. So this follows Shine and Cut and its brother's best friend. The hero in this is super possessive, like extremely possessive. So if you like possessive heroes and you like hockey romance, you have to read this. I will say I was shocked that I loved this so much because it is pretty insta-lovey and I don't like insta-love, but something about the way that it was done, I think because the way he was so possessive, I was just like, okay, I'm obsessed. I couldn't put this down. It also has incredible mental health rep. The female main character, her name is Cheyenne. She struggles with some mental illnesses and it's kind of set her apart her entire life. Um, and she has like some learning disabilities. I related to her so much, not just like her personality, but just I don't know. Like some so much about who she was, I just really resonated with and I love this so much. The guy in this was just such an animal. I don't even know how to describe it. I also really love the drama in this and normally like I'm not super obsessed with drama in books. If it's there, it's there and I'll read it. But this, the drama in this, I was very invested. It's like 400 pages. It's not like super small or anything. Like I said, I read this super quickly. There's something about hockey romances. It's just, it's literally crack. I just cannot get enough of, I mean, not just sports romance, but there's something about hockey in particular, like them talking about being on the ice and stuff. I just, it just, it just does something to me and it's perfect for January. Like I binged so many hockey romances this month. Like it is insane. And so, yeah, this was definitely like one of the ones that I feel like the star rating doesn't matter because it was just so good and I was hooked. Also cannot get over this cover. Purple is my favorite color. Let me give you a close up. Like this is so cute. This is the back of it. And then this is the spine. It's so gorgeous. I ended up reading it on my Kindle because I was like, uh, I don't even want to mess this copy up. Like, it's so pretty. And this is a signed copy. This was the first thing I read from this author, so I definitely will be picking more up from her. I forgot to mention, this starts out with a one-night stand. I don't want to sway you by saying, oh, it starts out with a one-night stand. It's kind of insta-lovey because I'm telling you. It's just so, so good and it's, it's a quick read. Just go read it, please. Next up is one that you might have already seen already. It's kind of getting some buzz and that would be Mile High by Liz Tomford. You guys, it is on the longer side, like I will say, and the text is a bit smaller. So this one, I did read this physically. It took me a bit longer to get through, but it is so good. So the tropes in this book are reformed playboy, boy falls first, Forbidden Romance. It's also Hate to Love and it has a little bit of found family. Not too much, but it's got like a sprinkle, you know, just enough to like keep you satisfied with the found family. And I say found family because like a lot of the banter between the friends was really good. And this is going to be a series. This follows Xander and Stevie. Oh, and I forgot to mention, most importantly, Stevie is a plus size female main character. And it's not like thrown in there for the sake of like, oh, let's like throw some representation in there. This entire book is plus size rep. And let me tell you, that is one of the main reasons why I love this book. I thought it was so well done. Like I've never read a plus size rep like it's done in this book. It is done so well. It's not like it's Stevie's entire personality, but she's she feels like a real person because she's real about her insecurities 
and Xander is right there to like tell her just how wrong she is. Stevie is a beer loving, cheeseburger loving woman who comes to find herself and it is incredible. So Xander's is the hockey player and he takes a lot of flights as most hockey players do because they're traveling for games and stuff. And Stevie is one of his flight attendants. And he's always like getting on her nerves by sitting in the, I think it's like the emergency exit row. And if you sit there, basically the flight attendants always have to give you, you know, a rundown on like, are you prepared to do this? Are you prepared to do that? Like if you've ever been on an airplane and you sit in the emergency exit row, they talk to you about like what you have to do in case of an emergency and stuff. So he and his friend always sit there because he's like trying to get on her nerves, but he like low key, high key really likes her and like wants to get her attention and stuff. And it is so funny. Like the hate to love and this is so good because he gets on her nerves so bad and I'm so here for it. Like it is so cute. I'm obsessed with this book. I think the only flaw is that it it, it was a little long, but I don't know how to describe it because like, even though it was long, I was like, okay, I also don't want it to end. But I do think some things could have been cut out just to make it a little bit shorter. The internal dialogue, internal monologue, I forget which one it is, but it is still worth the read, especially because I bawled my eyes out reading this book. There's a scene, I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but there's a scene when it comes to like, honestly, body dysmorphia. Like the body dysmorphia, that term is not mentioned, but it just felt like it, okay? And I bawled my eyes out. Like I just cried so hard out. I, I was crying before I even realized I was crying. Like I, I was reading the book, sobbing my eyes out. And then I like stopped and I was like, holy shit, I'm crying so hard right now. <laughs> I just did not expect this book to like make me cry so hard. The only other thing I would say is that I would have wanted a little bit more groveling from um, Xander's, but this is such a good hockey romance. Definitely recommend it. And I'm actually gonna be starting the next book in the series either today or tomorrow. I'm on the ARC team. The next book is called The Right Move and is a brother's best friend. I'm super excited. It follows Ryan and Ivy who are roommates and there is fake dating. Oh my god. I hope I love that book. I cannot wait to start it. It should be hitting my Kindle sometime today as I'm filming this. Next up is one that I have been anticipating for such a long time. Like I've owned it for a long time and I just like hadn't picked it up and I finally was like okay. And it's him by Serena Bowen and Elle Kennedy. A lot of my friends love this. My friend Jess absolutely loves this series. I think there's three books. Um, I've only read him so far but this was so cute. So this is like a almost like a second chance romance but it's definitely friends to lovers because they were friends. Jamie Canning and Ryan Wesley were friends in the past and then something broke them up as friends. This weird night that they had and things got a little awkward afterwards and then they just like stopped talking. Ryan has like always had a crush on Jamie and he never really got over that and so whenever they're like back together and their team's playing for the championships and stuff it's kind of like a second chance to make up and that's exactly what happens. This one I actually listened to the audiobook. I started it physically but then I was like let me just get the audiobook. The audiobook was so good so I highly recommend that. I'm one of those people that's like really really bad with audiobooks. Like I don't do a great job retaining but I did a decent job like paying attention and this was just really really cute and wholesome. This book left me pretty satisfied. If I'm like itching for more of their content then I'll definitely pick up Us which is the second book. So if you want like a cute wholesome male male hockey romance check this out. This is the alternate cover so there is another cover option if you're not obsessed with this one. Next up is Puck Shy. You guys I don't even know what to freaking say about this one. I love this. Not gonna lie I didn't know what to expect. The title alone I was like okay Puck Shy. It sounds super cheesy. I hadn't read this author before so I kind of went in with like mediocre expectations. This one starts off so so cute. When you read it put your expectations for realism away. We're just here for a fun time. So it follows Harper and Colin. Basically Colin's car like breaks down or something and then he's like walking on the side of the road and Harper is like gets distracted and then almost runs him over and this is how they meet. I just thought it was so funny although not realistic. It's quite funny because she ends up taking him to like wherever they're needing to go. I don't really remember the specifics, but so she takes him in her car, which is not safe. And he's like this super big hockey 
player and she knows nothing about hockey so she doesn't like recognize he's like this super famous hockey player which is another reoccurring theme in a lot of hockey books the hockey players are this like super famous rich basically like a celebrity and anyway so she like drives him and after she like almost kills him and then they like don't talk to each other they don't even know each other's names right and then she signs up for like this online dating app and then he also signs up for the online dating app so you can kind of like guess what happens but he doesn't have like a profile picture because he didn't want to be recognized because he kind of is like a celebrity or whatever so she doesn't know who he is but he knows who she is and it's just oh my god I was obsessed and it's not long the text is like pretty big I read this in one sitting it's only 330 pages it's so freaking good I'm 100% reading the next book in the series I love this there were so many cute moments in this book I really appreciate when authors can pack so much cuteness and so much love into 330 pages I appreciate that so much there was a moment where they were like facetiming and he's in a bubble bath eating an oatmeal cream pie and a beer while he's on facetime with her and it's just so cute I loved Harper in this book I related to her so much she makes these like creepy dolls and I just thought it was super cute because I love creepy things. She's like a big horror fan. I cannot recommend this enough. I'm obsessed with the cover. It's got like a little puck on it and some hearts and it's just really cute. The next book in the series is called The Blind Pass and this is a grumpy sunshine that takes place in Vegas. They get married in Vegas and then whenever they get back to like normal life. I'm not sure the details but something about it is like they can't immediately like get divorced. Like they have to like pretend that they actually like love each other or something like that. And so I cannot wait to read that because one, I love Vegas so much. I went to Vegas for the first time in 2022 and I was obsessed. I love everything about Vegas, the vibes, the like atmosphere, the gambling. It's a fun time, okay? It's the city that never sleeps. But anyways, yeah, I wanna read that. And then I'm actually gonna skip the third book in that series because it's got a trope that I'm just not a fan of. I, I know I'm not gonna like, well, I mean, I don't know. It might be good, but I just don't think I'm gonna love it. But it's got like the pregnancy trope. Book three, if you're into pregnancy trope, check that book out. I personally am going to skip it, but I am going to read book four, which is called Sin Bin. If you're familiar with hockey, like if you do something bad and you get like get kicked out of the game, they put you in the sin bin. And this is a forbidden age gap. Please. I think it's forbidden because I think she's the coach's daughter. She's like working for the team, I think. So it's forbidden in that way. And then also there's an age gap. I don't know what the age gap is, but I'm gonna read it no matter what. And then we have Scoring Chance, which I believe is book five. This is a Opposites Attract and the hero in this is a virgin. Very interesting. Let me know if you've read the series. I'm so excited to get to the rest of the series. And then the last one, which I don't know if it's come out yet, but it's called Glove Save. And this one follows a grumpy hero and a single mom. It's supposed to have like really funny banter and stuff. At least that's what the author is saying. But I'm super excited and I cannot wait to just like binge the whole series because the way I was obsessed with Puckshy. Oh my god, it's so cute. Okay, next up, if you are into sorority college hockey romances and you haven't read the Off Campus or Briar U series, like now is your time. Briar U is a spinoff to the Off Campus, right? So if you haven't read Off Campus, it's the deal, the mistake, the score, and then the goal. I'm not a fan of the goal because it's like it's got the pregnancy trope, but the deal, the mistake, and the score. I am obsessed with all of these books. Like, you need to read this series. I know it's super popular, so like, you've probably already heard of it and you've probably already read it, but for those who have not, go read the series and then read Briar U. Next up, we have a Briar book. This is The Chase by L. Kennedy. This is in the Briar U series. I knew that this book followed Dean's little sister, Summer. I kind of went into this and I was like, I don't know what to expect. Um, I had heard bad things. I had heard that the love interest was like not it. And I'm not gonna lie, Colin Fitz, he's a little questionable here and there, but I really enjoyed this. I thought it was super cute. This is a opposites attract brother's best friend and roommates. So in the beginning, she gets kicked out of her sorority for starting like a house fire. She's kind of like a legally blonde Elle Woods kind of vibe. She's like this really beautiful blonde. And so people judge her based 
based on her appearance. And she does have ADHD. So she has like that insecurity of like people think I'm stupid. Oh, I'm not good enough and stuff. And I don't know. I loved Summer. Summer gets 10 out of 10 stars for me. Like I'm obsessed with her. I love her so much. And then there we have Fitz. Okay. He's like this nerdy smart guy who makes video games. Like he's like a coder, basically like a super geek. So they couldn't be any more opposite from each other. There were a lot of cute moments in this book. So there's a point in this book where she's about to go on a date with another guy and Fitz gets a little jealous. The other guy is named Hunter and Fitz goes into her bedroom and he just says the words, don't go. And oh my god. Like Fitz, although he said some dumb shit here and there, he was like such a softy. I would say it's not a book that I'm super obsessed with, but I love this world so much and I had a really good time reading this. So I'm super excited to pick up the rest of the series. Okay, so then we have The Risk and this follows Brenna and Jake. And we have a little bit of fake dating here. I don't know why I said it like that. Anyways, we have fake dating and she's the coach's daughter. This is on my immediate TBR, but um, I'm super excited for this. I feel like this could be my favorite from the series. Like, I don't know. I just have a really good feeling about Brenna and Jake, okay? The vibes are there. It's definitely like an enemies to lovers kind of thing. And then we have Hunter and Demi's book, and this is a friends to lovers. So if you like that trope, I mean, I'm just gonna read the whole series, but like, I am... I'm just gonna be obsessed. Hunter got his heart broke in the chase. I feel like he's gonna be like this huge softy because the way that he was obsessed with Summer and Summer was like, I'm sorry. Now there's Demi. So I'm happy to see that he's gonna get his romance. And then we have Connor and Taylor's book. And this one is a fake dating. And I've heard that the guy is like super sweet. Also, I forgot to show you guys my little Briar U sweater. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is one I recently read that I do not have a physical copy of and I want so badly. And it's called Iced Out. I believe the author is C. Ritchie. I don't know how to pronounce is it like I think it's Richie. Anyways, this is a rivals to lovers male male hockey romance. It's also opposites attract and it has a bi awakening. So one of the characters is straight, well, kind of straight, I guess, and then he realizes that he's not so straight as he thought he was. This was incredible. Incredible. I have a book hangover from this. Like I haven't read anything since I've read this. Like I've started another book and I just, I cannot get this couple out of my head. This follows Oak and Quinn. And when I tell you, okay, like obsessed. Now they do, I will say they do kind of go from like rivals to not so rivals pretty quickly. So if that, if you're like a pet peeve of that, just be aware. But I'm telling you, the tension, the steam, this is probably one of the steamiest books I've ever read. Wow. Speechless. This is so freaking good. So the premise of this book is that Oakley, he comes from a line of hockey players. And so he's like set up to play hockey and he really wants to be the captain, but he's not captain. Quentin is captain, but nobody really likes Quentin. Even his like team members like don't really like him because he's so like harsh and stuff. And he's like very quick to anger. But in the beginning of the book, his teammates kind of like do something very bad. And then he gets kicked off from being captain. I wouldn't say it's revenge plot, but it's just like they do something to where like he loses his title as captain and then Oakley becomes captain. I'm telling you this book, you could cut the tension with a freaking knife. The steam is so good. Chapter seven. Had me on my knees. They end up becoming rivals to lovers because they have like this superstition. They like sleep together and then the next day they win. So then he's like, oh, is it because we slept? Like it's like way out of left field, very far-fetched, but you know what? I don't care because I loved this book so much. One of the reasons why I love college sports romance and hockey romance in particular is because of like the banter, the locker room scenes, and just like before the games when they're talking about like getting super hyped up. And then during the games, the scenes in this book were so good with the hockey games. I was like super hyped up, super excited. I felt like I was like in the stands at one point. I feel like this will be one that I reread. They had some roommates that I'm interested in, you know, reading more about. Cause like, I love when they have like the roommates and like the side characters that you end up really falling in love with. And the ending of this, like I cannot emphasize enough. This was truly like everything I want in a hockey romance. Like it was so cute. The tension, the steam, the characters, the gameplay, just like everything, the relationship development. Five out of five stars, so good. Next up is a book that was released in 2022. 
and that is Icebreaker and this one has gotten a lot of traction in the book community and it's gotten is super popular and I love that for this book because this is so cute. This follows Anastasia and Nathan and it's got forced proximity, it's got caretaking trope, it has mental health representation, like it is so good. One of the main reasons I love this is because of the mental health rep and just overall like I was obsessed with their relationship and I was obsessed like it is a little slow going in the beginning but it gets so good. Nathan becomes the most whipped man ever okay. Trigger warnings for eating disorder because she does deal with like food restriction and things like that and one of the main reasons I love this is the conversation around that like I just thought it was really good and the conversation around food and nourishing your body and stuff and like Nathan would just like encourage her so much and it was just so cute. There was one point when he like washed her hair that's so so cute. I think it's worth the hype in my opinion. I know a lot of people have been reading it being like this book's not worth the hype. I totally get it. Not every book is gonna be like a hit for everybody but you can check it out and see for yourself if it's gonna be for you. It used to be on Kindle Unlimited and it's not anymore unfortunately but the physical copy is super cute. So, and I mean, you can always buy the ebook version, whatever you prefer reading. I did annotate it. I just had a great time with this book. Okay, next are books that I haven't read, but are on my immediate TBR. Some of these I'm gonna go through pretty quickly because I am short on time and um, I haven't read them yet. So I'm just gonna give you the tropes and th that I'm excited to read them. So we have Heated Rivalry. This is a enemies to lovers, male male, uh, grumpy sunshine. And that's all I really know about it. Next up is Always Only You by Chloe Leese. This is a slow burn. I believe it's opposites attract. It's also a forbidden romance and it has autism representation. I read my first Chloe Leese book back in December, The Mistletoe Motive. And I was obsessed. Like if you've watched my favorite books of 2022, that book is in there because it's so good. I was kicking and screaming the entire time reading it. And so I'm super excited to get to this series. Now this is the second book in the series. So I do want to read the first one. I want to read them in order, but this one is a hockey romance. So I did want to include it in this video. Next up we have Only One Kiss by Natasha Madison. And this is in the Only One series. So have not read it, but it's on my radar. Let me know if you've read it. And then we have Made For Me by Natasha Madison and I actually started the first book in the series which is made for me. It's in the made for series and this one the guy is a hockey player but he goes to like to be like a doctor beyond borders. Anyway so he comes back and like I think he continues hockey. I don't know much about it. I'm only like a couple pages in but I did start that. Next up are two books by Becca Mack, Consider Me and Play With Me. This series keeps getting a lot of traction on bookstagram and I'm really intrigued. I don't know much about it other than like they are on the longer side and just so Super excited to get to them because I keep hearing great things. I really like the alternate covers. Thank you so much for being here. If you did make it this far, please leave an icicle and the hockey stick emoji. And if you did like this video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel for more videos. You can also follow me at Locks Library on Instagram. And thank you so much for being here and I will see you in my next video.